Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a look at the story of Hello Puppets Midnight Show, as we explore both the surface level story, as well as a brief overview of information gathered from the secret cassette tapes, which helps us to understand the bigger picture. I'll also be giving a theory as to what I personally believe the game's rather mysterious ending is all about. Before we get started, I want to give a quick heads up that I recently compiled a video where we listen to each and every secret tape, so for a full understanding of this video, I would recommend watching that one. The tapes are over an hour long in total, so this video will condense down information to bullet points and omit anything non-essential to the overarching story. With that said, sit back, relax, and let's explore this haunted puppet studio as we get to the bottom of its unhinged narrative. This is the story of Hello Puppets Midnight Show Explained. Owen Gubberson is the creator of the show Mortimer's Handyman, which first aired on October 11th, 1985, and became an instant hit. Owen was also responsible for designing the puppets who starred in this show. These puppets are Daisy Danger, a friendly homemaker who enters danger mode when angered, Nick Knack, an artistic puppet who enjoys to perform on the stage, Riley Ruckus, a scientist who is forever in search of more data to further her research, and also has a dog named Roscoe who's her pride and joy. And last but not least for his Mortimer Handy, the leader of a group, and Owen's original, legendary design. In fact, it was Mortimer's extravagant design and lifelike movement that led to Owen becoming headhunted by a TV network who greenlit his show. Though, as we learn from Owen's audio logs, the road to success was paved with failure. Six years earlier, Owen was given his first shot at creating a version of Mortimer's Handyman that was cancelled after its pilot. Ted called again a few days ago to tell me how sorry he was that it didn't work out. He said, what did he say? He said, don't feel bad. Lots of pilots never get on the air. It's part of the business. Did you get that, Mortimer? Stop crying. Nobody likes a crybaby, Mortimer. Nobody likes a... God, I think I cut my hand. We learn from these tapes that Owen is an odd character indeed. Owen had a tough childhood with an alcoholic father who used to beat him. This led to Owen retreating into his own mind and shutting himself away from the outside world. He devoted all of his time to the creation of his puppet Mortimer, and later, the other handymen. Owen talked to these puppets as if they were real people, and his doctor began to worry, believing the unhinged puppeteer was slowly disassociating from reality and linking pieces of his personality with the various puppets. Essentially, Owen and the puppets were becoming one and the same. We also learn from these tapes that Owen didn't get along with the other crew members working on Mortimer's Handymen. He frustrated executives by making bad business choices, told voice actors how to read their lines, and even messed around with technical aspects of the set, such as lighting, to get it just right. This leading to a near-fatal accident. Next thing I know, he's scurrying around in the rafters, messing with my lights, and he drops a 2K an inch away from my best boy Griff's head. How am I supposed to work like this? Eventually, after much controversy, the network decided to pull the plug on Mortimer's handyman and pushed Owen to make a rash and desperate choice. One that would be his downfall. Hello Puppets begins with Owen heading for his office with a mysterious book in hand. We quickly learn why he has procured this book and what he intends to use it for. The book was sourced from an unnamed book dealer, who we later discover was a scam artist who usually tricked folk into buying up ancient relics for far more than they were worth. However, the dealer warns Owen that this book is different. It seems to be a legitimate relic with magical properties. The book is said to be a prison for a demonic entity known as Enioch. It was written in a mix of Greek and Hebrew by Gnostic monks many centuries ago, as a way to catalogue the dark magic of the world and keep it safe. However, as the years went by, the book fell into the wrong hands, and has now made its way to Owen's desk, who invested half a million dollars of his show's budget to secure it. Owen's intention was to use a passage from the book to cast a spell on his puppets and bring them to life. 
While he was successful in doing so, it seems he cast the incorrect spell, and released the demon Enioch from its prison within the book and into the body of Mortimer. While it is suggested that Enioch may be the source of Mortimer's cruel and twisted persona, it is also possible that Enioch was simply a myth. The book dealer tells Owen that certain spells in the book act like a mirror, and so whatever is given life through these spells will mirror whomever has cast that spell. This means that Mortimer and the other puppets may simply be literal representations of the darker side of Owen's consciousness. Owen had many flaws and qualities that we now see mirrored in these puppets. He hated people. He had a temper. He had an ego. He was a control freak. He had an artistic side, a scientific side, and a passion to get things just right. However, we also discover that Owen had a kind heart, an element not seen in the demonic puppets that pursue us through the game, but one that will appear within another puppet later in the story. After bringing Mortimer to life, Owen feels like he's finally back on track to realising his true vision for the show, one that doesn't involve working with actual people. However, one day while working at the studio after hours, he discovers that Mortimer is missing. It isn't long before he tracks down the maniacal puppet, and to his horror learns that Mortimer has hijacked the body of a new worker at the studio, a young woman named Harper who he met just a few days earlier. Father, you found me! You're as quick as can be. Mortimer, what the hell are you doing? We're playing a fun game, Father! Stop! Just stop it! Let that girl go right now. Don't you worry. She's quiet as a mouse. Every second, I move more and more into her empty little house. Mortimer, now in control of Harper, uses her as a host body and is able to set a twisted master plan into motion. Using spells from the Book of Enioch, Mortimer brings the other handymen puppets to life and turns the studio into the stage for an elaborate game, one Owen must conquer to retrieve the pages of the magic book and then burn them, which in theory should reverse the spell and return the demented puppets to their soulless, dormant state. This game requires Owen to survive four rounds against each of his three puppet creations, Daisy Danger, Nick Knack, and Riley Ruckus. Each of these puppets at Mortimer's request oversees a wing of the TV studio, and rig the halls and rooms with deadly traps and cunning minigames. Owen must enter each zone being careful to evade the puppets while also completing the challenges set by them and then escaping with a page from the book. After gathering several pages, Owen learns that the person he thought Mortimer had taken control of, Harper, was in fact another crew member named Katie. Harper is actually still okay, and unaware of the nightmare currently unfolding, returns to the studio to look for her friend, who is now under Mortimer's control. Katie and Harper had made plans to see the movie Dream Warriors at the local cinema. Dream Warriors is a Nightmare on Elm Street film, which released in February 1987, so this gives us a pretty good idea of the year and month the story of the game takes place. Owen tells Harper he will meet her at the cinema after pretending he sent Katie on an errand which would indispose her, desperately trying to hide the dark truth from Harper so she wouldn't get caught up in this mess. However, this lie catches him out, as after Harper repeatedly calls Owen to find out why he has stood her up for the movie, she returns to the studio once more and this time is captured by Mortimer and used as a bargaining chip to stop Owen from burning the book pages and reversing the spell. You've forgotten one of the most important rules of a handy. Always, always have a plan B. No. She came looking for you after you didn't show. She has a kind soul. I can taste it, I would know. And if you send me to hell, her soul comes with me as well! Mortimer, don't do Put this. Put the pages on the floor. Owen challenges Mortimer to one last game, winner takes all. If Owen wins, then Harper goes free and the book pages are returned to him. If Mortimer wins, then Owen will submit to his will and no longer stand in the way of their puppety plans for world domination. 
This leads Owen to complete one final round of tests against the handyman, but this time, when he returns to the safety of his office, surroundings have altered. The room is bare and all traces of the puppets, including Mortimer, are nowhere to be seen. Harper has been left locked behind a gate and Owen quickly sets about freeing her. As he does so, Mortimer, once again using Katie as his host body, emerges in a bid to persuade his creator to side with the puppets. Owen defies the puppets and sets Harper free, but is then chased into the depths of the studio, where he must survive against all of his creations one last time. Eventually he manages to escape and reunites with Harper in the studio lobby. After Harper is safe and clear, Owen has a change of heart. Oh, what are you doing? I'm really sorry you got pulled into no, this. No, 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 Owen, you are not doing this down with the ship crap right now, okay? Let's go. Mortimer was right. This is where I belong. That wasn't Mortimer. Those things aren't your puppets anymore. No, I think they are. This spell is a mirror. Maybe there was no Antioch. Maybe the handymen are just me. They hate people and love puppets. I mean, that's me. That's what I let myself become. This is my fault. Okay, look, just stay here. Stay right here. I'm, I'm gonna go get help. You've been a good friend. Thank you, Harper. And so we come to the grand finale of Hello Puppets Midnight Show, and this is where we must theorycraft to make sense of its somewhat confusing last moments. As we make our way back to Owen's office, you will observe how the studio seems to have changed quite drastically since the story first began. The walls are charred and it seems to have fallen into a state of ruin. Sticky notes guide Owen back to his office, where he is asked to record a message on a tape player and then play it back. Doing so reveals a chilling reality. Hey Owen, welcome home. I don't have time to explain everything, and it seems like we remember less every time. So, if you don't remember, just record a message to yourself and play it back. Uh, okay, um... <clears throat> Hello, this is Owen Gubberson. Uh, okay, um... <clears throat> Hello, this is Owen Gubberson. Ah! Owen is not Owen at all, at least not in body. While we play as Owen for much of the game, by its conclusion, we are simply reliving his memories through the body of another host. If we listen to the secret audio logs collected throughout the game from a mysterious book dealer, we learn that in order for these puppets to sustain themselves, they require the acceptance of their creator, the person who brought them to life when first casting the spell. There's a catch though. Whatever you create is going to be permanently dependent on you to survive. Back in 1987, when Owen first brought his creations to life, he originally denounced them. Mortimer, desperate to seek the acceptance of his father, tasked scientist Riley with finding a way to transport Owen's consciousness, to take his memories and implant them in the mind of a new host. Continuation! Fascinating side effect. The psychic toll of moving minds between body barriers that separate memory. Hosts will relive their own... I would suggest inducing this of Feb 23-23 as many times as we need, altering variables until he chooses us. These hosts seem to be other members of the crew who worked on the show Mortimer's Handyman. We gather this information from names found on sticky notes and audio recordings that match up to those listed as working on the show. Carla, Jake, Joel, and finally Matilda. This is also why, in the original Hello Puppets game, we find the body of Owen Gubberson in such a horrific state, vampirically drained of his life force. Is it a one-time thing, or are these life forms, whatever they are, pulling life energy from you continuously to sustain themselves? Could it have a vampiric effect on you, slowly bleeding you out? This does explain why we revisit the different zones four times each, and with each visit, why we see more and more host bodies piling up, and the scenery becoming gradually more dilapidated. The game's story takes place over a period of years, leading to the eventual storyline found in the sequel. This also explains the charred look of the studio as a fire broke out on February 24th, 1989, as a result of Riley's experimentation. 
There were no phone calls, no meetings with Harper. These events are simply memories from Owen's consciousness, now projected through the mind of a new test subject. The end goal being for Owen to choose the puppets, which he eventually does at the end of the game, but not before creating one final puppet himself, a puppet named Scout. But who am I? I mean, do I have a name? Of course, your name is Scout. Scout. Eh, I don't love that. There has been much speculation as to whether Scout is meant to be Owen's friend Harper, as she reveals her true name during the game's finale. Owen, wait! My friends don't actually call me Harper. That's my middle name. My name's Scout. Well, thanks, Scout. While Scout does visually resemble Harper and is surely based upon her, after much thought, I do not believe this puppet contains Harper's soul or consciousness. Firstly, Scout doesn't retain any of Harper's memories. Secondly, while their voices are similar to a degree, both of these characters are in fact portrayed by different voice actors. And finally, we must remember that the other puppets did not actually contain human souls, but instead seem to be a mirror one based on different elements of Owen's own persona. It seems Scout inherits the final piece of that personality, Owen's kind heart. Underneath his ego, bad temper and disdain for humanity, we see Owen's actions throughout the game portray him as a man on a mission to set things right, and that is precisely the task he sets for Scout. Owen designs Scout as a weapon to destroy the other puppets, and although this doesn't quite pan out, she does at least help free a kidnapped host in the story of the original game. A host who no doubt went on to tell the world of these evil puppets, which may well lead to their apprehension and termination. Scout's creation also explains the sticky notes we encounter throughout the game world. These notes seem to be instructions, left by past versions of Owen who seeks to design and create the perfect version of Scout based on his inspiration for crew member Harper. These notes even remind him of a spell required to bring Scout to life. With his vision for Scout finally realised, Owen sees a future where his demented science experiment may finally be reversed, a mission he unfortunately failed to achieve himself. With his quest complete, Owen finally submits to the will of the handyman, creator and creation becoming one and his life force used to sustain them. I'm ready! And with that, we come to the end of this video and a look at the story of Hello Puppets Midnight Show Explained. There are more layers to this story, including a puppet rebellion, which occurs as a result of the handymen growing tired of Mortimer's tyrannical reign. But we'll save that for a separate video. Although once again, all of this information is included in my secrets video, which is live right now if you wish to comb through all of the secret audio logs at your leisure. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it both entertaining and informative. And if you did, then remember to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.